here, the two plants next to each other. These are the real and imaginary parts of the discrete Fourier transform. This is the discrete cosine transform. Notice this is thick on high frequencies. This of artifacts, most likely you will be able to ignore this and that, and you will have to encode only these guys. And let's do and compare it. So what we are doing here, we will we decide to keep only eight largest coefficients, both in the discrete Fourier transform and in discrete cosine transform. So you just uh, uh, select, uh, this is simply, you can read this, uh, this simply selects eight largest numbers. Uh, and this is what you get for DFT, and you do the very same for TCT, right? And you get two compressed. And now let's use inverse formula of the compressed version. And the inverse formula gives you the following plots. Look, so this guy is DFT if you take eight largest coefficients. This guy is discrete cosine transform if you take only eight largest coefficients out of 64. So you can see, because you didn't create the artifacts, spurious uh, uh, harmonics to make these jumps, it is much better compressible. That's the reason why we use DCT in JPEGA. Because it provides much higher accuracy after compression because things that are not present in the image will not be spuriously introduced just as a consequence of approximation. There is still penalty because there is cusps to negotiate around, but the penalty is minuscule compared to the penalty of the mismatch. So I'll put this on the web and I'll write lecture notes and put them on the web. Read that because you see, uh, it's in the books, you are given the formula and you just said you compute DCT and that's what JPEG is. That's crap. This is the meaning, the engineering design behind the DC behind the JPEG, and it's a colossal trick. How to do approximations with minimal uh, artifacts, with minimal penalty. It's imperfect, but good enough for all practical purposes. Uh, okay, so next time we have enough time, I'll show you what happens in continuous case, uh, which explains why your CD player can work even though it gives only discrete samples, but you can perfectly reconstruct. And the key why it works is just this picture and nothing more. We will just define the good basis in which the signals can be decomposed. And this happens to be the basis of shifted things. So, um, and this will conclude this class and so it's a kind of a little bit of everything, but today it's multimedia and internet applications. So lo and behold, um, it is in fact, I believe, a, a good balance. And yeah, we are told, please uh, go online and feel this quality. My experience, tell me how I can improve this course each year I get in trouble because people don't bother uh, to do this and uh, then I have to explain why so few people responded. Uh, so please do the, uh, just keep me out of trouble, uh, write my experience reports so that I know what to do next semester, I mean next year. Better. Okay, we finish.